I welcome all of you to learn about embedded systems communication protocols and I hope you must be having a lot of hope to learn something and uh, I will try my best to to add the value into what you know as an embedded systems engineer or aspirant or enthusiast or anything so basically I hope you know a little bit about me but I can just uh, quickly introduce myself. I'm Umesh Lokhande. I'm a founder of binaryupdates.com. Uh, I create online courses, uh, e-learning materials. I am very active on YouTube. I'm also publisher on Udemy and Pact Publication and other stack commerce and other publication platforms. So basically the idea of hosting this webinar is to give you, you know, a real live use cases, okay, which can help you understand what this embedded systems protocols are and uh, how you're going to use them by showing you real live use cases making the course or making this webinar the purpose is to when i was learning embedded systems then when i was reading a couple of books like some mazidi or you know there are so many books out there in the market and you can go and do a lot of courses but nobody actually takes the actual use case and builds something you know which is used in an industry and that's where the problem is and i thought why not i go and build that and that's the uh, inspiration to create this course and then create this webinar back to back okay and um yeah i mean i don't want to spend so much time on my introduction because if you just search umesh lokande online you might get a lot of things where you can read about me so um going further in next one hour I hope I'm audible just I want to confirm otherwise uh, it would be a, a lot of waste of time right so is there anybody can confirm me whether I'm audible yeah you're uh, audible I'm okay perfect so for next one hour we will be uh, exploring and learning uh, why communication uh, is important especially when I say communication means I'm talking about communication protocols why it's important in embedded systems then we will look for a uh, two uh, very popular types of communication serial and parallel communication because that's the way two devices will talk to each other in embedded systems then going further we will explore serial uart communication protocol and this is used between the communication between your microcontroller and maybe your computer or maybe your microcontroller and your sensors. When I say you will use this serial UART communication protocol between a sensor, I'm talking about the devices which you buy in a market. So let's say if you buy GPS module, GSM module, Bluetooth module, or you can buy RFID module. I mean, this is what has been used in industry, right? I mean, or even if you go and have a PLC or CNC machine, you kind of get the serial UART protocol up there. So if you want to build something, you know, substantial, you need to know UART protocol. And I will be putting up one use case which might help you to get the clear idea. What does that mean? Then going further, we will explore serial I2C a protocol, which is inter integrated socket. And this protocol is very popular when you want to communicate your microcontroller with other popular i2c sensors now if you look online and if you search like temperature sensor or pressure sensors or something like that you can able to see most of the sensors supports i2c protocol right and that makes the i2c protocol very very important for anybody in embedded systems to do anything they have to know i2c protocol i mean I have seen over my 10 years of career in embedded systems like whenever somebody get hire somebody okay then first one week they give that person to work on i2c protocol because that's give the clear idea how the person is capable of okay how much his intellect is so you can understand why i2c is so important and i think in every interview your interview rolls around this protocols then we will dive deeper into serial spy or spi some call spi some called spy it's a serial peripheral interface and this protocol is used when you want your microcontroller to talk to the display devices you might have seen a very fancy display in your buses or in railway stations and 
so many places right maybe there is a diwali coming up and you might see a lot of fancy stuff out there so in those kind of applications where the display or the memory devices you can use spi protocol so we will also go a little more deeper and see you know how how the spi protocol works and maybe one or two use case right and as i said every protocol we will be talking in terms of a use case an actual live example project no nonsense right and then we will talk about professional opportunities or if you are already into the embedded system you're doing something then maybe you can see my perspective how this embedded system will evolve because there's a lot of changes happening right now in industry i can say like there's a whole new field is coming up which is called embedded ai embedded artificial intelligence and uh, we will speak about it a bit later when the right time comes for it and then i will give you you know something bonus or giveaway like always uh, after adding value and my try is to help you best i can by giving you some sort of you know resources or you can even speak to me sometimes on phone call on whatsapp i don't mind this kind of thing as long as i am free and in this webinar in the end we will have a q a session if you have any specific question around protocol maybe you are doing a job and you may be struggling somewhere debugging some protocols with oscilloscope or in something something whatever you know you can talk to me okay so that's how uh, we will be spending our one hour in this webinar uh, now let's going further uh, why protocols as i said there is no embedded system project or product you can build without uh, protocols okay this th the most common hardware interfaces means a protocol uart i2c and spi at least i have not seen any of my project where i have built any product embedded systems and i have not used uh, maybe any of this protocol right it is possible like uart is must it is must for debugging and i do see an spi maybe one you can use or most of the cases you can use both protocols so protocols are very important because always in embedded systems you want either microcontroller to talk to the sensors or you want microcontroller to talk to your computer because if you connect the sensor let's let's take the first example you have a microcontroller and you have a personal computer so if you connect a sensor to your microcontroller you're not a superman that you go inside the chip and see what's the data from the sensor right so you need somehow some way to see the sensor data which is microcontroller is collecting from the sensor and you can watch it see it on your personal computer or serial monitor screen right so either you can use a protocol to communicate your microcontroller with the personal computer or the microcontroller with the sensors right and you can do anything but you need a protocol for sure right communication and when we talk about communication happening between your sensors and your microcontrollers or any kind of communication happening in your embedded projects or embedded systems it could be a serial communication or it could be a parallel communication okay um, serial communication is something where you send a data means the sender sends the data to the receiver bits by bits okay so you have a few bits you can send it in a sequence in a serial 1010 okay over the database uh, data bus and that communication sending the data in a serial bits is called serial communication okay now when you send the data uh, in one shot okay like you have a multiple pins connected from sender to receiver okay and then you have a multiple pins so in one shot you can send a multiple bits okay and that's called parallel communication where um, you can able to achieve more speed by sending more data at single shot maybe a single clock pulse okay so that's how serial and parallel communication is differentiated now when you will use a serial communication in your life in your embedded system projects when you have a limited budget for your project at the same time your sender and receiver is a little far away from each other let's say several meter distance okay you you can have a usb cable or you can have any kind of communication cable and 
I mean, a longer distances where you want to communicate, you can prefer serial communication, cheaper and longer. In the parallel communication, it is expensive and it is expensive because you have to manage on multiple pins because data transmit not over single wire like this, but your data transmits over multiple wires, multiple pins, and nothing comes free in the life, right? You have to pay for it. And this pin counts, increasing pins in a data transmissions in a parallel communication cost you more. It's expensive. But the good thing about the parallel communication is uh, it is fast, okay? In a performance uh, applications like in early part of my career, I worked on FPGAs, okay? Field programmable get array. It is something different than the microcontroller, if you don't know. But the FPGAs are completely driven through the parallel. So it's it's a high speed, but then it's an expensive. The problem is it can only for shorter distances, right? You cannot communicate sender and receiver two different devices for the longer range. You can have a risk of losing data. Now we know communication protocol or communication types. Let's dive into the first protocol that we are here to learn for. It's the UART, okay? And this UART is a serial communication protocol because we saw in a serial communications, uh, the one device send a data to other device, okay? Look at this in lower left corner, the microcontroller is talking to personal computers, say for example, and one device sends the other device a data into asynchronous frame okay now let's let's go to a little, little more detail uart means universal asynchronous receiver transmitter this means the communication between your transmitter that's say for example microcontroller and receiver say for example a personal computer if this communication doesn't use the clock then it's a asynchronous communication all right, so UART is asynchronous communication. So when two devices are talking to one another over UART communication, so they don't use a clock, right? And because they don't use a clock, you have to have a frame. So data transmission happen through frame. We will talk about it, what the frame looks like in a typical UART communication. But if we take the same example, microcontroller, let one device is a microcontroller and other device is a personal computer or a sensor then the communication happen between two devices over tx and rx pin in uart okay so the tx pin of one device talks to rx pin it is something similar like when i am talking to you okay i am a sender means i'm speaking and you're listening right if I am sending a data, means I'm speaking and you're also speaking, it doesn't make sense, right? So that's why this communication is, is, is very straightforward that one device is transmitting, other is receiving. If the other device is transmitting, the first device is receiving. Okay, so this is called transceiver communication, transmission and receiver, full duplex. All right, so the good thing about UART communication is it's, a little bit cheaper than the other communication and you can achieve the longer uh, distances let's say several meters um, in case if you are if, if you want to if, if you're working on a project okay where you want to communicate industrial machines so say for example you have a cnc machine or you have a plc's or you have a gsm or gps okay or any sort of you know device which support serial UART communication protocol, then you can connect the TX RX of your microcontroller to TX and RX of your other UART device. It could be anything, any serial device. All right, so that's that's how the UART communication works. Now, in terms of use case, if I want to make it even more simple for you to understand UART protocol, then you can see here I have a microcontroller, okay, AVR, 80 mega 328 which is the most popular microcontroller in the market and you see this microcontroller is talking to your personal computer over this usb serial converter uh, chip or something okay this adapters are very common if you search with this name you will get a tons of things on amazon and flipkart so any tom dick harry could be able to make this 
So let's say, let's take an example. I connect a temperature sensor to this microcontroller. Okay, now I write a program in a microcontroller to read a temperature data. Now, I'm not a superman that I can go inside the chip and see what is the temperature, right? So I need somehow to see on my computer what is the data coming from the sensor. And this process is called debugging, right? You just want to confirm whatever happening, okay, does this make a sense? Okay, and, and I mean, I'm getting a message where, am I audible to you? Because I got a message from Miss Rukia Rahman that it is not audible. So I think Miss Rukia, it may be the problem from your mic or headset. I'm not sure. So I'm sorry, I can't help you right now because it will break the flow. But the point here is if you connect a sensor and if you want to see the data on, and this is certainly the case, right? You make any product on the planet, you want to see what's happening inside the chip, right? And that's where you connect the TXRX of your microcontroller, that's the UART protocol, to the TXRX of your this USB cable, right? Because this will take care of the communication, this adapter. But basically what is happening here is you are communicating your microcontroller to your personal computer over UART as a communication protocol, all right? I hope this gives you a very substantial understanding like how the UART actually works. Now, how data transmission happens, okay? Um, that's a little more complex, but as I said before, we send a frame. I mean, if, if we want to send data, bits and bytes from the microcontroller to the personal computer over UART protocol, then we are sending the frame and frame is basically a, a specific structure that how you pack the data and then you let your microcontroller to send the data into this particular frame format. Now, if you look at my course, there is a dedicated section on the UART communication protocol where I have explained what is a start bit, what is a stop bit with good high quality animation and I mean, that gives you more clear understanding, but on the top level to build your perspective about this UART overall as a protocol, like how it works, then I hope you get the point, all right? But if you just want to refresh it, then the frame of a UART looks something like this, okay? The only problem you can have in the UART is your data size is maybe 8-bit or 10-bit, right? So usually the popular is 8-bit because every character in English uh, or ASCII keywords you represent into the 8 bits and 8 bits is one byte of data, right? So 8-bit and 10-bit mode you have in your UART. Okay, so that's all together uh, UART is for us. Now, the second popular protocol in embedded system widely used is I2C protocol. That's inter-integrated circuit, okay? It's, it's again another form of serial protocol. So this is also serial protocol. So data sent bits by bits, right? In maybe in some sort of frame structure or something. Now, why this popular, why this protocol is very popular is because it only uses two wire to communicate two devices. Okay, so again, I take the same case. We have a microcontroller, okay, which is our master device. And let's say we have a other device, like maybe some sort of sensor or memory chip or something, which is a slave device. And the communication between your master microcontroller and slave device, which could be a sensor, say for example, this communication happens over just the two lines, SDA and SCL. Okay, so you can see the data transmission through this SDA and SCL line. Now, SDA means a serial data line and SCL means a serial clock line. Now, if you just try to compare with the earlier UART protocol, then the substantial difference is this is a 
this is a serial i mean this is a serial data line and serial clock line so we are using clock here right you remember in earlier case in uart i said there is no clock and because it is using a clock it is a little more faster than uart all right and when you use a memory to read and write you need to have a little bit more faster and that's why you don't use uart for such an applications to interface memory in this place all right you use i2c because you expect more speed it's just a common sense you know when you go and buy a computer why you look for why you look for a device with a good ram because you want to achieve good speed of read and write all right to data transmit from here and there right you just want to achieve better performance and when in your embedded products you need to let's say if you're working on some healthcare product or military hardware or something very special where the performance is everything price just doesn't matter right then you see most preferred choices are the i2c sensor people look for i mean at least i look for so if you ask me umesh which kind of projects where i2c i mean which kind of devices where i2c protocol will be much suited so let's say if you want to interface iprom memories right uh, or maybe real time clock or maybe a sensor highly precision sensor for healthcare product let's say temperature sensor or i mean i'm talking about body temperature sensor or maybe accelerometer into the drone or something you should prefer to go with i2c protocol right because it's fast and it's just very beautiful right now it's not beautiful because i'm saying it's beautiful because look at the slide next slide you can see i have given an example use case and you see your master microcontroller can able to talk to multiple slave at the single shot and that's the beauty of this protocol like by using just by just having sda and scl just a two pins two wire you can have one master can able to talk to multiple slave okay and multiple slave can able to talk to the master isn't it beautiful you only use two pins on your microcontroller and you can communicate multiple devices all right and the way this communication works is every slave device has a special address okay it's called slave address like if i talk to let's say in this webinar we have uh, miss rukia or miss prajakta or mr mohit or uh mr kapil i guess right or mr hitesh or something I, I know i'm talking their name so they have the id so when i call their name i'm talking to them right so every device comes with a special you know slave address and through which you can able to talk so it's very widely used and you i mean this is the one shot you must know otherwise you can't put you know embedded system right if you don't know these things i think all what you know then led blinking just doesn't make sense now like uart protocol you have a frame structure for i2c as well okay it's not a typical frame but here you have um read and write cycle okay i'm not going to go deep because again i'm go going to give you a reference later where you're gonna learn more about this protocol in my course because i again have made it the animations and made it simple in the course to for you to understand how it can be built right it's not something can be made it in one or two hours but um yeah if you just learn step by step then it makes a sense to uh to simplify and you can able to write your own drivers for any sensor in the market okay over i2c protocol now if i take a real world example okay which i certainly will demonstrate you you can see i have here a microcontroller 80 mega 328 now don't think by looking this picture i'm using arduino means i'm writing that arduino programming no that's you know we will be writing it, it's good to write a real c program not arduino c program because when you build a professional product you have to write a real hard code embedded c right uh, but to make it simple for you to understand i use this board arduino board because it's something you can get it anywhere right you it's it's very inexpensive and you can easily buy and 
you can see I have an I2C device that's a tiny RTC module. This is again very popular in the market, right? Very, very popular I2C device. And uh, I mean, if you take up the job, you know, <laughs> this is the first task anybody can give you. Okay, that to communicate your RTC chip with your microcontroller or connect maybe the EPROM because it also uses I2C protocol to the microcontroller. And you can see, I will show you a little bit later how we can use SDA and SCL pin on Arduino. You know, it's a A4 and A5 pin. Okay, A5 is SCL and A4 is SDA. You can see in this picture, but um, I will maybe better later speak. But you can look at the left side of the picture here. We have the master microcontroller and the slave. That's the RTC chip here. And the SDA and SCL of the microcontroller connects to SDA and SCL of your RTC chip, right? And then VCC and ground. If you're electronics engineer, you must know without VCC and ground, there is no circuit on the planet will complete, right? So that's the use case. Maybe I will demonstrate you to by building a calendar project you can able to see how efficient the i2c protocol is all about okay but you know if you go and look in the market i mean 80 percent your sensors will be i2c and maybe 60 70 percent of your project managers will push you to use i2c sensors because they are digital sensors they are a little bit cheap right in terms of price and uh, availability is great because we forgot to talk about this but i2c protocol is developed by philips okay and it's it's kind of time tested it's very popular that's the reason now the next protocol in our list to learn and explore is SPI. Some people also call SPI. It's a serial peripheral interface. So it's again a serial protocol. Okay, like we are learning here three protocols. All these three protocols are serial protocols. And that kind of maybe tell you why serial communication is so important, right? You can you cannot just create any project or product without serial without using any serial protocol okay without using you know without not been using any serial chip now the reason why people use spi protocol in in the product is because the serial peripheral interface spi protocol is little more faster than i2c okay like we seen UART, so I2C was a little bit faster than UART, right? And SPI is even more faster than I2C. Are you understanding this? Like if you build the product, then you should know what is important, right? And how important it is. So that's, that's how. Now, that is the good part of SPI protocol that it is faster than UART and I2C. But the problem, I mean, the drawback and limitation is it uses four wires so it's a four wire interface so you need more pins to communicate all right so it has the advantage to achieve good speed but the disadvantage is you use slightly more pins as compared to i2c or uart all right and this data transmission happens by 8-bit register we'll speak a bit later but the pins are like mozi meso SS and CLK. We, we are not going that much detail, but just let me just brief you how this protocol actually works. So again, here also you have the same philosophy. Like you have a microcontroller, which is your master device. And then you have another device you want to communicate, maybe display or sensors or some integrated circuit, some chip, random chip, memory chip, say for example. So master communicates to slave over this four wires so ma so the so the microcontroller does have this four pins and the slave spi device also has this four pins and that's how you basically connect them uh, to establish the spi communication between these two devices 
okay and if you ask me example like where this is very widely used then again i say because it's quite a bit faster memories if you buy iprom or ram or something you see they supports spi protocol then display another popular thing because sometimes the display needs to be very very fast because you want to change the information on the display very fast maybe in just a couple of nanoseconds right and um, sometimes some sensors needs to be very fast say for example healthcare or military product okay where a little bit of data here and there will change the decision making all right so that kind of application you prefer to use spi devices now as you see on my screen if i show i give you the understanding of how this protocol makes a sense and how it communicates again um, in this device we have one master microcontroller and it is talking to a multiple slave devices all right so this this protocol also has the ability to let one master device can able to talk to multiple slave devices okay it's it's a beautiful thing because uh, at one hand it increase the use of pin counts but on the other hand with the high speed you can able to connect a multiple devices all right now in the development perspective writing the code in the firmware this protocol spi implementation gets a little bit complex because here not only master can write to slave but slave can also write a master back and forth okay like full duplex which makes it very good skills of writing software okay and that's why you know you know you need a little bit decent understanding of how this this protocol can be used okay and you see on on the right side we have one shift register so master shift register that will go into the microcontroller and the other shift register into the slave device and by just shifting a bit you know you can see just shifting a bit on every clock okay look at this clock also incrementing so by increment of every clock pulse you are moving one bit to the to the right okay and because you're not sending a frame at one shoot you are just flipping the bits in the sequence into the registers the both devices this protocol achieve much higher speed of communication as compared to you what and i to see now i would be i mean if you if you get to see my course where i have explain this entire animation because it's a little bit of complex you can honestly it's really difficult to put out i'm i'm just i'm just trying to give my best to put in front of you so that at least you get a good overview of all three protocols otherwise what happens is many people in embedded system they just do led blinking timer interrupt and they just think like they are ready okay so that's basically misunderstanding. Nobody speaks these things. These are extremely important thing. If you cannot able to contribute into the company and build a product or help somebody to make the projects, it just doesn't make sense, right? There's no point unless you go and do some testing or something. But let's come back to the example project that I want to show you as a live demo later. I'm using dot matrix display module which is very popular in the market you might have seen some buses or if you travel to mumbai sometimes the locals has it the buses has the name plates and number plates and all other things and scrolling displays and all and this kind of devices can able to communicate to your microcontroller to show maybe i, I will be showing you how i can able to show you or how I can able to put the English alphabets to show onto this display module, all right? And here in this example, our microcontroller 80 Mega 328 will be a master device, and this 8 by 8 dot matrix display will be slave spy device, SPI device, all right? And 
honestly if you if you can able to knock down this example i tell you honestly when i was writing this code when corona started it took me almost four days i have to figure out because there is, i mean i tell you both i to c and spi you will not find anything online all what you find online is that arduino code and libraries which anyways doesn't make a sense because you get some everything ready-made and even if you make something happen if somebody asks you to change something you cannot change right because it is not something that you have done right so this is the use case exactly demonstrate how you can implement the spi protocol in your microcontroller so as your microcontroller as a master can able to talk to slave spi device which is a dot matrix display i will show you the real case i built in i will show you maybe binary updates showing up onto the display and now come to the point where you know we live in a world where a lot of distraction is there and um, i use this slide very often when i talk to somebody anytime when people ask me because in my daily life i involve a lot in iot products okay but the reality of life is i don't know people speaks or not but i want to speak especially um, for the people who does embedded system you cannot build iot product if you're not good at embedded system okay i mean because your iot devices and iot gateways are nothing but the microcontrollers right it's a microcontroller microprocessor and your entire game of iot is based on the sensors data because iot is all about generating a sensor data and taking the action on the top of sensor data now if your sensor data is not at all reliable or if it doesn't make any kind of sense then i don't think any point there to imagine of making you know iot is much more bigger I'm not saying embedded system is everything in IoT, but embedded system is very crucial part, right? I seen a lot of people, they can't able to deliver any substantial product in IoT. They have everything else, cloud and Falana, Demkana, network applications, everything fine, fantastic, beautiful. But then the sensor doesn't work sometimes or the data flip it around or maybe you you try to show somebody a demo and if it doesn't work these are the clear sign of not being having a good command on embedded system finished if somebody shows me because i've been through the process right i have made investors i have made uh, the projects i did projects for some companies as a client of mine and i seen and i faced in my life like what is a real problem to deliver and 99.99 percent .99 of the products in 21st century is going to be iot products right and if there's no embedded system i mean if you go to some training programs you kind of see they talks a lot about making apps and dashboards and these things but i think you have to make sure that you first have to have very good understanding of embedded systems otherwise everything is just a cripple down okay if you come from the software background and you want to just stay till the cloud or application then your game is different i'm not saying that skills but they are a different skill they are not an embedded skills right that's not a product skills i mean you can see every corner in i live in a city pune and every society you go and has a company startups web or app development or something so my point always for the product enthusiast focus more on embedded systems if you really want to make the products okay and you can get a lot of help in other sectors okay maybe network or cloud or applications there are a lot of people companies can help you but this is something you cannot cannot rely on if you rely on you need very good people to be right so the key to succeed in 21st century whether it's a iot or it's a artificial intelligence because as i said there's a big industry coming up called embedded ai okay that means embedded systems powered artificial intelligence maybe some other day i would make another webinar where i would show you some use case on computer vision because in 21st century every other device will use a camera 
okay every other device go to intel's website or the youtube channel go to nvidia's website broadcom qualcomm falana dimkana anybody you see what they're pitching in they're pitching into the camera application why but then you cannot interface camera by the way if you forgot to talk your spi protocol this spi is also used with the cameras all right because camera has to be very very fast camera capture images in a real time videos in a real time i i wish i could have more time and we could have spent more time discussing this but i have my time limitations but you know as i said the subset of i mean i always say the embedded system is like a basics right like in a computer writing a programming is the basic it's not any more um what i can say a very special skill right like maybe 10 years back when i graduated with engineering degree maybe by that time it was a special because if you write a code you kind of get a lot of eyeballs right you can attract a lot of people in a companies and get good salary or maybe attract for businesses but right now it's a basic skills so even if you want to succeed in any of your you know saas or pass product development software as a service or product platform as a service typically iot or ai products you have to be very good at embedded firmware otherwise what happens is you see people do people do a very you know i don't want to criticize anybody but honestly people does a lot of training programs like four years of engineering degree two years of mtech and then six months of falana dimkana and then you know just keep going keep going not reaching to any point right they are not reaching to the point where they can build something and this is exactly what i say people still feel unproductive and low confidence because they don't build anything they don't like criticism they don't like things and you can't grow like this right you need to see the reality and the reality of embedded systems by the way to be very good in terms of protocols and the underlying hardware understanding all right i don't want to spend more time i have the testimonials it's everywhere i mean you can go to my udemy you can have the udemy testimonials you have a pack publications i also worked at hytron so hytron does have my names and other testimonials so i have a lot of tons of people you know who write because they have experienced my training and the kind of involvement and the passion that i have so you kind of read it here or maybe read it later anywhere you like on online platform i don't want to waste the time here uh maybe but my focus is always you know to to get to the point whether it is for me myself personally or to my clients maybe maybe they are somebody who buy the course or maybe they are somebody my clients as a consulting project or anything to reach it to the end objective and the end objective is the product right and i i i force you if you are into somehow in a job where you are not doing something substantial please please the future is coming up very challenging prepare yourself intellectually resourceful right you should know things in upfront otherwise i think the bigger problem is how you can stay employable rather than just getting the employment right so just get the upfront things now this is a thing i i could probably talk a lot but these are my courses which you can find on my website maybe i can show you a bit later um, you can maybe buy this course these are very cheap i mean the amount of effort that i put in to create these courses i mean of course i cannot put my one week to create the presentations and animations because i don't make any money and it just doesn't help me by my life right so i tried to make yesterday this presentation because the people who have seen my earlier webinar they know still you know that was completely different and this was completely this takes a time right it's just i cannot afford but uh, you know i have some courses which is just the cost of medium pan pizza right it's not very expensive that you cannot afford it i think i believe so and uh, if you want you can check out and maybe you can add some value in your understanding and of course right now because we met here for this webinar and i really appreciate your time so you can ask me the question maybe uh, we can still take a, a, 
a lot of time to brainstorming and I am here will be spending enough time today to answer your question. Maybe that has to do with your career. Maybe you are doing MTech or maybe you are doing PhD and you are maybe facing some sort of problems or you're you may be in a job right now and you're working on a project where you're struggling maybe i2c or spi protocols to implement or use i am here to help you today okay let me know how best i can help you okay there's no point that we meet and we don't make it productive i want you to be happy after this session and i also want to be happy and i want you also to be happy so right now you can ask me straight away uh, after this presentation, I will show you the demonstration to put things in a perspective to show the live demo. It will take us another few minutes. But later, even if you have the question, you can write me over umesh at binaryupdates.com or you can ring the bell. Feel free to ring the bell. That's fine. I'm not very, I am busy by the way, but I always have a time for the valuable and meaningful discussions. Okay. So now let's not waste the time. As I said, um, I have some code written here and you can see on my screen. Um, let's take a first project. These are the projects, by the way, these are the projects I'm showing you right now. And if you go to my websites, binaryupdates.com, okay? And if you go to learn professional embedded software now, don't misunderstood. With embedded system as a hobby is a different thing. Okay, an embedded system as a professional, I am clearly talking about problem solving, right? I'm not talking about if this LED blink blinks, it's fine. If it doesn't blink, it's fine or something flickering, right? I'm talking about a serious development. And if you really want to do a serious embedded system development, you might want to check out this embedded system design bundle. Okay, I think Mr. Mohit is here with us today and he bought it last time okay from from binary updates but i can show you here i have two products okay together cost you 1400 rupees so this one just focuses let me just open this up this is just focuses look at the table of content a step by step from introduction i mean the chip development board pin description everything bit manipulation bit basics because this is what people just take the shortcut in the life and then go in a long term very long cut right and like somebody has okay sorry mr moid i have to mute you because it was disturbing me and then set up an installation of a software and then you know some digital input output examples timer counter interrupt this is very systematic just kind of writing a book you know and everything like creating multiple file projects this is what help you learn how you can write the libraries means the drivers the way you write in your companies real projects then this analog to digital converter here i have taken the real temperature sensor and I read the temperature sense sensor data onto the real UART or the screen or something. I mean, everything is with the real live use case, no nonsense content. And then the second one, this is very specific to I2C, serial I2C and SPI protocol. And here again, this course just have a two chapters, two sections. One is dedicated for I2C and one is for SPI. And these are the code that i'm showing so these are the code which i'm showing i'm using right now you can see it's a little bigger project i cannot afford to explain but if you buy the course you can see i have written entire coding live explaining every single include and this variable declarations and every other nonsense okay so i'm using this projects from the course itself so let me just open first the UART project uh, just to show you how UART make a sense. Just the live case, you know, if you remember our presentation, I have said to you 
if the controller wants to send a piece of data to the computer how it can be sent it could send over UART protocol right so in this example I have used this binary updates string okay and this string I'm sending to my personal computer now I have let me just connect the hardware this is the problem of embedded system you have to sit with a lot of things and I have connected Arduino and let me flush the code and show you and then I will and we will be using this X loader a piece of software and the board by the way I'm using is Arduino Uno no fancy stuff right people might tell you by LPC STM32 Falana Dimkana just use the Arduino simple Arduino and write a real C program no bakwas right and if you can able to do this you know you can do anything in embedded system you can build any product you you like so let me just load the code and just to show you and put things in a perspective so this is that UART project and I have this hex file I can select and I can select the port you know and upload the code and once I upload the code I would be receiving a data from the microcontroller like you remember this picture microcontroller is sending a string binary updates to the computer over this UART communication protocol which is basically the part of this USB and this TTL converter and now the question is how one can see because you need something to see right as a hawa mein thodi latke gao right so you kind of need some kind of serial terminal software like putty or something i use putty i love putty i'm a little bit older right now and there are a lot of options right now but i still love putty it's my old love so i can use the com port to what communication port my Arduino board means this 80 mega 328 chip is connected to computer that is com port 8 right you remember and the baud rate speed at which the controller is talking to the computer and then hit open button and you can see it start sending a string now you might see Umesh this doesn't make sense like in hello world right <laughs> but my friends everything in life starts with maybe something very small when you born on this planet you kind of start uh, walking first time and you may fall down so many times but everybody's journey starts with walking doesn't matter you may be the son of Larry Page or maybe the Bill Gates everybody has to walk nobody just jump in and then sit into the fighter jet okay so my point is this if you can able to send the string from the microcontroller why want you can write a variable let's say a temp variable okay let's say this is a temperature variable which hold a temperature data I'm not going to show this because it will take a lot of time but there are some examples in my courses which you can prefer later but if you can able to send the string you can able to send a sensor data and you can able to see the sensor data on your screen right and that can let you confirm okay how or what the data coming from the sensor and basically this gives you enormous power to because as I said you're not a superman that you can go inside the chip but by using this UART protocol and the serial terminal software you can probably able to see the sensor data on your screen make a sense and that you can call debugging or communication you can use a GPS coordinate if that is a UART device or GSM device or something right so I hope this puts things in a perspective the best I can in my 10 years of experience all right so this is an absolute use case where you send the string but if you can send a string you can send any nonsense you like okay let me close this serial monitor and let's go for another use case okay and um, this use case is another project I have um, as a part of this course which I have showed you this course right basically it's not a course it's 
yeah it's it's a course bundle and um, you can download this core this code that i have written and uh, this project is something that i showed you the picture like this okay here we have the tiny rtc the most popular real time clock chip on the planet okay you can read the time date and calendar parameters by implementing SPI, uh, sorry, I2C protocol. Okay, and this is the, the the output from this I2C device I can show you right now. So this is that template project. And as I said, you know, when you have the I2C device, you every device has a unique slave address. Okay, now if we uh, dive a little deeper you can see this is the address a particular address a special address of this chip right rtc chip i'm not going to talk a little bit more because this code is really long um and um, because this is for professional people i just made it very clear it's not led blinking stuff that i can write four lines of code if that i want anyways i have my youtube channel which has maybe more than 8,000 plus subscribers, several million views. I can write the live coding as much as I want every Saturday, Sunday, but that doesn't make sense. So let me flush this code and show you how the RTC stuff works using I2C protocol, okay? And this is the templates. I can just flush the X file, upload the new code onto my Arduino. I have this set up already connected i made it in the morning so i can select the com port 8 just like uart and you remember we are still using uart protocol even though we are reading the i2c sensor data so you can understand how uart is important right it's not only for debugging it's not only for one purpose it can be used for multiple purpose and reason so when i open up you can see i have the the data you can see the seconds minutes and hours i have programmed this chip for 11 o'clock because our webinar is scheduled for 11 in the morning so and then you can see the seconds increasing the minutes and uh, you know the dates is flushing off so that way you can read the uh, you know uh, real time clock parameter now honestly you cannot build any product without rtc because if you look at traditional data logger products okay if somebody asks you build me temperature data logger and don't tell me you don't need a data logger in industry any jargon nonsense product you can build on the planet you know you need a data logger you need to play with the data and if you cannot read the data with respect to time i think that's certainly the most stupid way of engineering all right so this second minutes and dates is very important at what date you read what temperature at what time morning when the temperature failure happened right at what time certain wall get turned on so these are the actions um, which happens with respect to time needs this time variable always right and this rtc will give you real time clock calendar parameters so you can understand the magnitude of the importance of this and honestly this project again took me you know it costed me several days to write the code because this is the code you nowhere ever on internet will find it to download and extract and something you will never ever find if you find somebody it doesn't work right <laughs> you can waste your another you know months and months it just doesn't work you can see the seconds and minutes are updating right when it reaches to 60 seconds look at this okay 69 and then 60 and then the minute is three right so this does work by the way by the way i'm not wrecking anything <laughs> so that's how it is and uh after i to c if you want me to show something substantial for the spi unfortunately i cannot turn on the webcam right now because i'm sitting in a place which is which makes me difficult already my table has a plenty of hardware but i can show you the video which i have recorded yesterday to show you today 
okay and you see i have this eight by eight dot matrix display module okay and i have connected to this this microcontroller through this and by the way this 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 piece of video is a part of that course itself where i just muted the audio otherwise you could have have the audio where i have shown step by step how to connect the hardware and all other things but by the way uh, in the end you can show something substantial like you can see it says the english character binary updates n a r y u p d a t e s all right so you can program this device over spi protocol and you can show almost any of english or ascii alphabets you 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 like okay and this uses spi communication protocol i have not showed you the code for this if you want i can of course because i wasted so much of my time writing this code Again, these are very premium things. Honestly, I always believe if when if I would have been had this, maybe my game would have been completely different at this time. OK, so this is the code, by the way. It's completely written into C. It doesn't use any library. Even if I use any library, let's say this matrix.h file. But this is what I have written by myself, right? Look at this hexadecimal number, specially tailored for binary updates because that's my website and that's what I prefer to the show. All right, so everything is, is written into C and embedded C and I would definitely recommend you, you can recommend to your friends or families or maybe for yourself if you want, because it is, it is something, you know, a very, very big value. And, you know, the perk that you get is if you can buy it because you've been a part of this webinar, I'm gonna offer you one hour live consulting if you have a problem understanding something we're gonna set up the meetings appointments and then i'm gonna live code or i'm gonna help you wherever you're stuck in okay and you can reach it to me through emails or phone or anything and it's all right okay so that's how it is i hope um, with the time that we have spent okay around maybe exactly one hour I think if I'm not wrong, you have learned something substantial, all right? And um, I would be very happy, you know, if you are the one who is about to start your career in embedded systems, or if you have already started career, and if you have any, any question on any protocol, anything, please feel free to, to discuss with me. And I would be very happy to add the value to this, this webinar. All right, maybe it would make a little more interactive this this webinar instead of just sharing my slides. I didn't wanted you to speak earlier because if you can speak, it breaks my flow, right? And honestly, I have to work after this webinar and <laughs> you have to do a lot of things, right? And yesterday also I was working on the slides. It takes a lot of time in life but let, let's add some value by your question. So is there anybody wants to ask me any question? You can unmute yourself and ask me a question, right? I feel like nobody has any question. I mean, you can ask me if you are working on some project or maybe you are looking for some sensors and you're not able to figure out okay like what protocol will be suited there okay in that particular case or something anything any any question you have uh, yes, uh, mm -hmm. your voice is a little bit low can you please yeah please speak to me hello your voice is breaking sorry can you please type in a chat box if in case somebody's voice is breaking okay please please type in a chat box now miss project asked the question please make a webinar on reverse engineering in iot yes i will keep in mind when i set up the next webinar i would keep in mind to give the preference for this reverse engineering in iot 
okay but uh, project uh, even if you want to do reverse engineering you are doing reverse engineering of embedded system right so basically reverse engineering of electronics or embedded is the same thing but we will speak on this probably my next webinar will be how to find a job or how to get the projects from the companies or how to maybe start a company or anything i mean anything that to do with starting up a job or anything you know searching for jobs you know i really wanted to help people who are serious people who are working very hard to get themselves productive to help them and that's why my next webinar will be uh, embedded systems jobs market and job hunting it will be like a tips and tricks how you can approach because i think many people make a mistakes they create the resume then they send the resume on you know xyz.com email address and expect to get a job that's not the way you get a job in 21st century right you need to go a little extra mile maybe maybe that's the discussion for the next webinar but yeah <laughs> otherwise we will lose the momentum uh now any more question anybody has please anything you need a help with embedded systems honestly you're lucky you have me to talk when i was at your place i have nobody to ask right everybody was showing me a very difficult pointer variable <laughs> And if you read a book, by the way, for embedded systems, it's very difficult to understand from the book, right? You need something substantial to be explained with a high quality of animations. And by the way, I, I would like to present you one snapshot of my animations. I mean, the course, the, 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 the quality of the content, what I mean, right? So let's take this UART. You can see I have, I cannot show everything, but you can see I have, it, it definitely has the audio. I cannot play the audio. Maybe I can start for the seconds if I want. So you can see the audio, right? And then the, I can mute it's not it doesn't look better but I have added the animation as much as possible and I think that's the best you can get on the planet okay I promise you for that because if not then I will give you your money back I don't need the money which doesn't add any value right so this is just one snapshot I have shown you the video but you can also there's several ways you can look at the content all right so all right it's there's no questions somebody was supposed to ask something and then the audio was the problem and then yeah it looks like no question from anyone no questions from anyone and i think then it's a time to say thank you very much for coming and being a part of this webinar and uh, mr venkat is sending the question mark uh, i don't know what does this means yeah, Umesh, uh, can you hear me now yes i can hear you now perfect yeah, Umesh, uh, just have one question. Mm -hmm. okay, uh, see, actually, I2C has a stern bit address, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, like, is it possible to access a 10 bit address sensor in that 7 bit? Absolutely. Why not? I mean, see, I2C operates in two, two variants of addresses, okay? So, I2C device either come at 8 bit addressing or come at 10 bit addressing. All right. So, like in my example, I took 
RTC chip, which is DS1307, which, which has a 8-bit uh, address. You might have seen that. I can show you even in the code. Um, yeah, I've seen I'm sure 0x68 was the hexadecimal number. Okay, you remember? So, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. You have a 8-bit or you have a 10-bit uh, a addressing. The only difference you have to do is when you write the code in your I2C driver, you have to turn on 10-bit mode of initializing I2C device. It has one bit, which is a special bit you have to turn on, and then you can access any 10-bit I2C device. Okay, so it's possible. And I could say it is not, it doesn't decide by microcontroller. Okay, I think mm -hmm. because it's a standard protocol, right? Um, like yeah. the English language for you and me to communicate and me and my friend Constantine is the same, right? Language doesn't change, it's like protocol doesn't change. So don't worry. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank my you. pleasure my pleasure yeah any more question anybody has nobody i think everybody looks a little bit shy <laughs> all right so without wasting a time okay i would again repeat the things thank you very much being a part of this uh, webinar it's my second webinar I made it one first webinar. I think some people from this participants were there as well. Um, and um, maybe next few webinars I will be hosting just to get better and add the value into as much as I can at least, All right? So I hope to see you into the next webinar as well, okay? And I would be happy if you would have got something or learned something out of this few hours that you spent with me. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, um, I wish you a beautiful day. All right. Good luck in your life and your career. Bye bye.